Welcome to Pardon That Vine. My name is Christopher Cabano, and this is the world's most unbiased wine review forum. We have a very special show live from Saint Emilion with uh, Jean Luc Tunavant from Chateau Valandreau, which is one of the first garage wines ever made. And we're actually at his house here and tasting in the garage room over here, uh, which I'll show some footage of later. Thank you for, for joining. Um, I just want to ask you a few quick questions. Talk to me a little, I guess, about the 09 vintage in general. La vérité, c'est que quand on est à Bordeaux, le dernier millésime qu'on présente est toujours le meilleur. Is that the truth? Is when we in Bordeaux, the last vintage we introduce our clients is always the best. <laughs> Et on rajoute, oui, mais cette année c'est vrai. And uh, we add to that, but this year it's true. Okay. Alors so it's not all hype. It's not, it's not hype as some people say that, you know, it's really as good as they're saying. It's very good. It is. Mais cette année c'est vrai, vrai. But this year it's true and true. Great. What is, what is this thing on pricing? Now, obviously, we're going to be for interview. Là, c'est formidable. Le son, le ah, rendez ah, le chemin de fer mm. et, et, et les tracteurs. <laughs> Obviously, with a poor 07 vintage, a pretty good 08 vintage, the economy, where does he and 09 is, I think it'll be similar to 05 on release? Or? Il demande en fait quelle va être l'évolution du marché par rapport au petit millésime qui a été 2007, au bon millésime qui a été 2009, quel sera le marché d'après nous du 2009? Il y a un jeune des amis qui ne pas être célèbre, donc il n'est pas le nom, qui dit toujours comment toujours les grands millésimes pas assez chers et les petits millésimes toujours trop chers. He said there's a friend of us uh, that uh, we won't tell you the name, he's got a big chateau, that uh, we used to say that we sell always the big vintage is not expensive enough and the small vintage is too expensive. So, à aujourd'hui on peut imaginer qu'on aura les prix de 2005. So today we can imagine that uh, we uh, will have the 2005 prices in the vintage. Pour deux bonnes raisons. 2005. Yeah. Pour deux bonnes raisons, d'abord c'est vraiment un vintage incroyable. For two reasons, because it's really an amazing vintage. Et, et l'euro et le dollar, ça, ça va mieux. And the uh, conversion between dollars and euro is better now for us. What's his response to certain people who say these wines are over extracted? You know, some of these garage wines and especially the 09 vintage in general. Quelle serait votre réponse sur les détracteurs qui disent en fait les vins de garage sont des vins trop extraits C'est souvent des gens qui font. C'est souvent ce qu'on disait, mais sauf qu'ils n'écoutent pas. It's what people say, but it's not true that the people say that they test them. Pour moi, c'est la même chose que quand une fille est jolie, on ne peut pas imaginer qu'elle puisse être intelligente. He says it's the same for a girl. When a girl is very pretty, we can't imagine she's intelligent too. <laughs> um, last question is, uh, in general, you know, obviously the garage wines was a huge phenomenon a few years back. Certain people, especially from the you know, left bank, are saying it's over. What's his feeling on the future of the garage wine? You think he's kind of, it's, it's seen its time, or you think that it's going to continue to grow? He demands, en fait, il y a eu une grosse mode des vins de garage, mais c'est un petit peu étouffé et beaucoup disent qu'en fait c'est la fin des vins de garage. Vous, quelle est votre réponse le, le problème des vins de garage, souvent, c'est que c'était trop cher. So the problem of garage wines was the price, because they were overpriced. Beaucoup qui sont rentrés dedans étaient des, des gens opportunistes. It was like uh, opportunist people that get into the garage wine because it was a tendance, it was a fashion, so they tried to get into. Mais l'influence des vins de garage est considérable. Mais l'influence des vins de garage est très importante dans mon business. Il y a un journaliste qui s'appelle Parker. Il y a un gars qui s'appelle Mr. Parker. Il, il a dit qu'il y avait deux personnes au monde qui avaient bouleversé le monde du vin. Il dit qu'il y a deux personnes qui ont vraiment changé le vin business. Michel Roland. Un est Michel Roland. Et moi Et le second est Jean Luc. À cause du fait que tout le monde a pu avoir la, la chance de, 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 de dire on peut faire, Because on peut le faire. C'est un peu comme le, le symbole américain, on peut le faire. Il était yeah. prouvé que uh, even starting from nothing, you can do that. Yes, you can. Aujourd'hui, on a ici uh, Pingus. Here we have uh, Peter Cisse from Pingus. C'est une star, une star mondiale aujourd'hui. Big star. Yeah. Yeah. Worldwide star. Mais on pourrait avoir ici aujourd'hui Harlan, par exemple. But, uh, We could have uh, Harlan too, uh, 
On a Tenuta de Trinoro en Italie. We've got uh, Tenuta de Trinoro for for Mr. Paquet. De vin, de vin de de Roussillon comme Claude Fay. We've got uh, Mr. Bizel with Claude Fay, the big star from the Roussillon. Et ça c'est l'influence de Garagiste. And of course the Garagist influence lots this kind of thing. Mais mais il est vrai que le mouvement Garagiste est comme. But it's true that the Garagist move just went down a bit. Parce que le monde entier c'est un fait Garagiste. Because everyone in the world start to say that we are garagist too. Right, makes sense. Traduit. Donc, premier vin, deuxième vin, mon angle envers les feuillages. Because uh, we do a first one, we do a second one, we do green harvest, we try to clean everything in the cellar, and everything is very precise. Et pour la concentration, qu'est-ce qu'il en pense lui? And uh, for the concentration, for the extraction, what do you think? Oh, I love it. I love it. That's perfect. I come. I started drinking Napa Valley Cabs early on, and you know, I thought at times Bordeaux was a little bit too thin. Napa Valley Cabs might have been a little bit too much. I think this marries them both. Et en fait, quand il a commencé dans le vin, il a commencé à boire les caves de Napa et il fumait ça trop puissant. Il goûtait d'autres vins qui n'étaient pas et il dit que ça, c'est le parfait équilibre entre ces deux. Last question. Put him on the spot. Other than anything Valandro, if he had one bottle to drink of the Oman Vintage. En dehors de Malandro, si vous aviez un vin à boire en 2020, lequel serait et vous devez répondre Un vin cher ou un vin pas cher Un expensive vin ou un cheap vin Money is not an issue. C'est pas une histoire d'argent. Quel vin vous aimeriez boire en dehors de Malandro Je ne sais pas. Peut-être. Maybe Pingus. Pingus. But I say he's not very honest with Pingus. That sounds politically correct choosing Spain. Yeah, it's politically correct to choose a wine in Spain. No, no, but it's for the heart. It's a heart reason. No, but we can talk here. We can talk. For example, there's a wine that I'm not connected to. He said, okay, well, so he will tell you a wine from, from France and uh, a wine where it's not involved at all. Chez Hervé, avec qui j'ai un coup de cœur, c'est un tout classé du Médoc. C'est la première fois que c'est bon, à mon avis, à ce point. Marqué de terme. He says, uh, it's the first time he's got the big emotion with this kind of wine where it's not involved at all, he's Marqué de terme. Bouteille qui vont valoir 35, 40 dollars. The price, the average price for that bottle, it's between 30, 35, up to 40 dollars. Uh, you can can test it because. Uh, can you say that to the camera? To, I get one more time just so they can hear because that's a big tip. People are going to want to buy that. It's yeah, much. so he, he says the first time he's got a big, big emotion and something very good for him was Marquis de Terme. And he's the one that you can test in here. Right. And uh, of course, we're not involved at all, not in in, uh, in the production or in the selling of this wine. It's just a question of emotion and, and just the wine testing. Well, thank you very much. Maybe we can just quickly taste this. T t have him tell me kind of what he, you know, what he thinks about this. And. Il dit si vous pouviez décrire un petit peu qu'est-ce que vous pensez de. Alors ça c'est c'est le premier qu'on a dans ce genre dans le goût. So he says the first wine we've got in that style, in that specific style. Il y a un goût incroyable. There's a special, special test. Qui est un mélange de Syrah. It's a mix of Syrah. Et de Pinot. And Pinot. Et il n'y a pas de Syrah, il n'y a pas de Pinot. And there's no Pinot and never Syrah. C'est du Merlot. It's 80%. Mainly Merlot. 80% of Merlot. Et 20% Cabernet Franc. And 20% of Cabernet Franc. Il n'y a rien d'autre. Ni Carmenère, ni rien d'autre. Not Carmenère. I think what's... Et le terroir a donné un goût incroyable cette année. And the terroir gave a special test this year. What's special to me with it is it's approachable today. Which is amazing on the mid palate, smooth, it's integrated. This is incredible today, is that it's already completely buvable today. Oui, on voit, on voit. Alors, ça, ça, il n'y a pas que chez moi. He says that's a characteristic that this year is not only on our wines. Right. But we found in different wines what you just said. Moex, the Moex, the 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 fleur pétrus, the Trotanois. Yeah, the fleur pétrus, Trotanois. He says he never tastes so many wines and he never drinks so many wines from '09 to like this. Yeah, he never tastes so many wines from '09 to like this. Yeah, he says he never tastes so many wines from '09 to like this. Yeah, he says he never tastes so many wines from '09 to like this. Yeah, he says he never tastes so many wines from '09 to like this. Yeah, he says he never tastes so many wines from '09 to like this. Yeah, he says he never tastes so many wines from '09 to like this. Yeah, he says he never tastes so many wines from '09 to like this. Yeah, he says he never tastes so many wines from '09 to like this. Yeah, he says he never tastes so many wines from '09 to like this. Yeah, he says he never tastes so many wines from '09 to like this. Yeah, he says he never tastes so many wines from '09 to like this. Yeah, he says he never tastes so many wines from '09 to like this. Yeah, he says he never tastes so many wines from '09 to like this. Yeah, he says he never tastes so many wines from '09 to like this. Yeah, he says he never tastes Ballandro Garage, Jean-Luc Dunavant 
This is where it all started, right here, right below where he lives. It's pretty cool. Sorry. <laughs>